Hello and welcome to this talk. My name is Mark Simkin and I'm going to present the paper Secret Sharing Lower Bound Either Reconstruction is Hard or Shares are Long, which is a joint work with Caspar Green Larsen from Aarhus University. In a secret sharing scheme, we're given a bit string here represented as a little file, and we would like to split this bit string into something that we call shares in a manner that allows us to pool together certain subsets of the shares and reconstruct the original secret. But at the same time, we would like to guarantee that certain other unauthorized subsets learn no information about the secret whatsoever. To specify which shares can reconstruct and which cannot, we have to define an access structure, which is simply the collection of all subsets of shares that are authorized to reconstruct. One of the most common examples of such an access structure is the threshold access structure, which for some parameter k contains all subsets of size k and which contains no subset of size k minus 1. So all subsets of size k minus 1 are not authorized to reconstruct the secret and all subsets of size k or larger are allowed to reconstruct the secret. A different access structure one can consider is for instance graph connectivity. So here we have a graph and we have two fixed nodes highlighted in blue and the shares correspond to the nodes in the graph and we say that a subset of shares is authorized if the corresponding nodes in the graph contain a path between the two blue nodes and otherwise the shares are not authorized to learn anything about the secret. More generally we can consider arbitrary general access structures which one can simply think of as a truth table of some sorts where every row corresponds to one of the possible subsets of n shares and a check mark means that this specific subset is authorized whereas the cross means that it is not and then the corresponding access structure is the collection of all subsets with a check mark one of the main questions in secret sharing research is how efficient can a secret sharing scheme be for an arbitrary access structure and here efficiency is measured in the size of the shares for instance, for the threshold access structure, we know that we can secret share a single bit where the share size is log n, where n is the total number of shares. And we know that this is optimal, so we cannot have an asymptotically better secret sharing scheme. For the case of general access structures, we know that we can construct them for arbitrary access structures with an exponentially large share size. And since 2018, we know how to construct them with an exponentially large share size where the constant in the exponent is smaller than one. And as of 2020, we know that the constant can be as small as 0 0.637, but overall the share size is still exponentially large. In terms of lower bounds, the best that we have is a lower bound from 94, which shows that there exists some access structure for which every share has to be of size at least n log n. So as one can see, there is a very large gap between the best known upper bounds that we have and the best known lower bounds that we have. And uh, the current main conjecture is that there is some constant epsilon and some access structure such that the share size has to be exponentially large. So the share size has to be 2 to the epsilon times n. But so far we have no proof and we could not disprove this conjecture. What we show in this work is a slightly weaker result, we show that there exists some access structure such that either the share size or the reconstruction algorithm run in exponential time in the number of shares. And this result holds even if we allow the secret sharing algorithm itself to run in exponential time. The high level idea of the proof is as follows. In the first step, we will consider a very large set D of access structures. So every element in D is an access structure, which as we recall is just a set of subsets that are authorized to reconstruct some secret. More precisely, we will construct a set D that is of doubly exponential size. And for such a large set, we know that the description length for any element in D has to be exponentially large. In the second step, 
we will use a secret sharing scheme to construct a lossless encoding of access structures. So we will construct an encoding which takes elements of the set D as input and outputs some bit string, which can be decoded back into the element of D that it encoded. And importantly, the quality in terms of length of the encoding will depend on the quality, roughly speaking, of the secret sharing scheme that, we'll, that we will use as the underlying building block. So the better the parameters of the secret sharing scheme, the better the parameters of our encoding in terms of encoding length. And given these two observations, we will now obtain our main theorem by simply observing that we cannot obtain a secret sharing scheme with parameters that are so good that the corresponding encoding scheme produces encodings that are smaller than exponentially large for the elements in D, and thus we obtain uh, an upper bound on how good the parameters of the secret sharing scheme can be. So in the first step of this result, we would like to construct this big family of access structures. And how we do it is as follows. All of the access structures will have in common that for n shares, any subset of size n minus 1 or smaller than that is unauthorized. And any subset of size n plus 1 or larger is authorized to reconstruct the secret. And where these access structures, the elements in D, differ is in the middle layer. So here we consider all the possible subsets of size n half. And for each of those possible subsets, we can either say this subset is authorized or this subset is not authorized to reconstruct the secret. So how many subsets do we have? Well, we have n over n half possible subsets. And for each of those, we have two options. So we can either say some subset is authorized or not. And thus, we have two to the power of n over n half ways of choosing this middle layer. And if we have so many possibilities of choosing this middle layer, then we have exactly that amount of possible different access structures in the set D. And because this is a doubly exponentially large quantity, we know that any element in D has a description length that, it at, that is at least 2 to the n divided by square root n. Before discussing the encoding algorithm, we for first need to be slightly more precise about what we mean when we speak about secret sharing schemes. So we define a secret sharing scheme for one bit secrets for some access structure curly A with respect to some function class F. And we say that the scheme is correct if for any authorized set, there exists some function F in this function class such that the reconstruction is correct often. So if we secret share a value and then we reconstruct it, then we would like to uh, be sure that at least with some high enough constant probability, we will obtain the correct secret. In terms of privacy, we would like to have that any unauthorized subset of shares and all of those functions in the function class f cannot reconstruct the correct secret with a high probability. So more precisely, if we look at some unauthorized set a, then for all of the reconstruction functions in the function class, the probability that they output the correct secret should be roughly one half. And uh, what we observe is that both of those guarantees are weaker than the standard notions that we know for secret sharing schemes. So in terms of correctness, we don't require perfect correctness, we only require correctness with some constant uh, high enough probability. And in terms of privacy, we only require privacy for functions in this function class, and we make no statements about what happens uh, when the adversary tries to reconstruct uh, from the unauthorized shares with some other function. And this makes the definition of our secret sharing scheme weaker than the standard notion. And this makes our impossibility result stronger, because if we can show that such a weak secret sharing scheme can already not achieve a certain efficiency measure, then any stronger notion for a secret sharing scheme will also um, run into the lower bound that we're proving. Okay, so how do we use a secret sharing scheme to compress an access structure, which are the elements of the set D? The first thing that we do is we pick 
random bits b1 to bt for some value t that we will specify later, and some random values r1 to rt. And what we now do is, as part of the encoding of this access structure, we will write down the secret sharings for each of those bits with the corresponding random tape. So we will secret share bi with bk with random tape rk, and we will write down all of those secret sharings. And what we do then is we go over every possible subset and we check whether there is a function in the class of functions that reconstructs the secret correctly for most of those t secret sharings. So now we know that if this a is in the access structure curly a, then this should be the case. And if a is not in the access structure, then most of those reconstructions should fail. And what we will now do is we will simply write down explicitly for which of those uh, subsets A, this is not the case. So if we see a subset for which most of the reconstructions produce the correct output, but which are not authorized to reconstruct the secret, um, we write them down in S. And the other way around, if we see an, some subset A, for which most of the reconstruction fail, um, but actually the subset is authorized, then we also write it down in S. And given this encoding, we can now decode the access structure as follows. So what we do is, first, we use the b1 to bt and r1 to rt to reconstruct um, the t secret sharings. And then for every possible subset a, we check whether there is some function in the function class such that most reconstructions are correct. And if this is the case, and if this A is not in the set S, then we conclude that A uh, is part of the original access structure. And otherwise, we conclude that it is not the case. And this way, we can reconstruct the full access structure curly A. So what is the efficiency of our encoding algorithm? The first thing that we observe is that the set S is sufficiently small. So it's still very large. It's some constant times n over n half. Um, but due to the correctness properties of our secret sharing scheme, for most of the um, access structures, we obtain the correct results in the previous steps, and thus we don't need to write them down in S. And even if s is this large, uh, we observe that the encoding size now is t times the share size, because we do t secret sharings, plus the size of uh, writing down s, which here is like 0 0.1 times n over n half, plus some minor terms. And for this encoding to work out, if one does the math, then one can see that t has to be set to be some constant times log of uh, the size of the function class. And now what we observe is that what we basically get is that the share size times log of the function class needs to be at least 2 to the n. So this means that either the share size or the logarithm of the function class needs to be exponentially large, which is basically the statement that we wanted to prove. I thank you for your attention and I refer you to our paper which is available on ePrint for further details.